One thing I have found that is the, one of the greatest feelings in this world is when someone admits that they are wrong and that you were right the entire time. For instance, so many years ago I was sitting uh, directly across from my good friend Brian at a fancy uh, Los Feliz restaurant. This was early on in our friendship. We had been friends for about a year at that point. We were still figuring out the dynamic and we were still trying to figure out just exactly uh, what we had in common. And we had a bunch of stuff that was fun. Uh, one, we're only children and we both are left-handed. And even though he is 6'4", I am 5'8", but I give off 6'2", so there's not really kind of a slight height difference. <laughs> so at the time, uh, Brian was in his late 20s and I was in my mid 40s. And when I was Brian's age, I always had like older male mentors, these accomplishments who would take me under their wing and they would uh, guide me and show me and advise me. And it was always a wonderful feeling because I always got confidence from this and it always made me feel good about myself. As soon as I reached the age of these older male mentors, I'm not going to force it, but say I'm with Brian and I say something profound and beautifully worded that he takes and uses as a long-term life lesson, then that's just the role I'm going to play. So on this day, we were sitting in the fancy Los Feliz restaurant. Um, he was looking at his phone and two people entered, a woman followed by a man. I barely register this, just as any stimuli coming in the room. And as the woman passed us, thought nothing of it. But as the man passed, I don't know what happened, but there was an energy that came off this guy. And I don't know what it was, it was like magnetic, and I can't explain it, but I could feel this guy's presence. And as he walked past, I turned around and realized, oh wow, I know who you are, and that makes sense. So the man and the woman, they go to their table that is now behind a partition that is out of the sight line of Brian and myself. So I turn back to Brian and I say, do you see you just came in here? And he looks up from his phone and he goes, no. And you know that feeling you get when you know information and someone else doesn't, so you get a little excited? So I grabbed a napkin and on it I wrote, Brad Pitt. And then I slid it over to him like we were negotiating salary. Brian looked at it and he goes, oh, really? Because now there's a partition and neither of us can see that table, or that, that table with them on it. And he goes, really? I said, yeah. He goes, are you sure? And I said, yeah. And he goes, how confident are you? And I said, look, I couldn't understand why he was questioning me so much. He didn't even see this guy come in. I mean, it's Brad Pitt. I recognize Brad Pitt's face. I have watched him in movies for 25 years. I follow the official Brad Pitt Instagram page. And I'm going to be real candid. Even though I am a heterosexual man, Brad Pitt falls into that elite category of a very few men on this planet that were they to say to me, you want to make out for a little bit? I would say yes, and may I tell people. So I grabbed the same napkin and I wrote 100% on it and I pushed it back with a little bit of gusto. <laughs> Brian, still skeptical, goes, why would he come to this restaurant? And I'm like, you know what? Here's how confident I am. I am going to get up and I'm going to go to the bathroom. When I come back, I'm going to stop at Brad Pitt's table and I'm going to talk to him. Brian goes, okay. And then I stand up, I walk to the bathroom and immediately regret saying that I would go to Brad Pitt's table. But, as one of my older male mentors taught me, that I must do follow through. If I say I'm gonna do something, that I need to do it. So I looked in the mirror, I primped a bit, I walked out, and I walked into the restaurant, I took a breath, and I walked over to Brad Pitt's table, and I stood in front and planted myself, and then Brad Pitt turned, I could feel my heart start to race, Brad Pitt looked at me, I looked at Brad Pitt, and before either of us could say anything, I was so overwhelmed with emotion that I just turned and walked back to the table, <laughs> sat directly across from Brian, and said, that's not Brad Pitt. <laughs> and Brian goes, I know. Turns out that because Brian is tall in real life, and I'm only tall in my imagination, that 
he was able to see over that partition and knew the entire time that was not Brad Pitt. And I'll be very honest with you, upon closer inspection of this guy, he looked nothing like Brad Pitt. If he entered a Brad Pitt lookalike contest, he would have been disqualified in the first round. But I had to do the thing that I had to do in that moment, which was I needed to admit to Brian that I was wrong and that he was right the entire time. And I could tell because I know that's one of the best feelings you can ever have on this planet. I could see that he had so much joy and triumph. But I could also tell one more thing about him was that he seemed more confident. And he actually seemed like he was really happy with himself right now. And as an older male mentor, I was happy to give that to him. Thank you very much. <laughs>